on Kike News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Jordan Spurgeon. Thank you for joining us. Another extreme heat advisory has been issued in Phoenix this week as temperatures are expected to reach over 110 degrees. Phoenix has already broken its own high heat record twice this summer, leaving climate advocates and community leaders worried about the heat's effect on the population. I know what heat does and then how it kills. Last year we had over 500 individuals die of heat-related incidences in Arizona. We need to make a difference. The Arizona Department of Environmental Quality is issuing a high pollution advisory for ozone effective for the remainder of the week. The ADEQ recommends that people limit outdoor activity while the advisory is in effect, especially children and adults with respiratory problems. Ground level ozone forms when two pollutants, volatile organic compounds and nitrogen oxides react in sunlight. The pollutants come primarily from automobiles, but also from other sources, including power plants and various solvents and paints. The combination of extreme heat and pollution, which many believe is becoming worse due to climate change, has a negative effect on everyone, but particularly on vul vulnerable communities. Vulnerable communities are often hit first and worse by climate change and face increased health burdens from pollution compared to the overall population. I know from experience that there are many older Arizonans just like me who have health issues such as asthma that is triggered on high pollution advisory days and we simply cannot be leave our homes. Extreme weather impacts our community, affects our family, Arizona's economy and jobs. Most importantly, it affects each and every one, one of us. Today, the Department of Health Services in Arizona reported more than 3,500 new COVID-19 cases along with 13 more deaths. Arizona now has the 13th most cases of COVID-19 in the United States. The state also has the 10th most cases per 100,000 of the population. Also, in Tucson, some city employees aren't complying with the vaccination mandate and face a possible five-day unpaid suspension. Almost 550 of these employees requested to be exempt from the mandate for religious reasons. The Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport is receiving $138 million in COVID-19 relief funds. Our U.S. Senators Kirsten Sinema and Mark Kelly made the announcement and say it's important for high traffic areas like airports to have, quote, the resources they need to slow the spread. The federal grant, which is funded by the coronavirus relief legislation, will go towards operations, personnel, cleaning, and stopping the spread of COVID-19 in the Phoenix airport. In southern Arizona, a reminder to wear your bug spray. Pino County reported its first case of West Nile virus this mosquito season. County health officials announced a resident contracted the virus, making it the first case to be confirmed outside of Maricopa County this season. Eight other cases investigated by Penal County have yet to be confirmed. West Nile is transmitted by mosquitoes, and people exposed to the virus typically experience minor symptoms like headaches, fevers, and fatigue. Those with pre-existing conditions may become more severely ill. Governor Doug Ducey issued an emergency declaration for Coconino County after post-wildfire flooding took a severe toll on local communities. Last week, more than three inches of rain fell on burn scar left by the museum fire. The heavy rainfall and subsequent flooding caused major damage to homes, neighborhoods, and private property. Recent post-fire floods have impacted Arizona's infrastructure, including roadways and drainage systems. Ducey says he also requested additional resources to assist with cleanup efforts in the town of Gila Bend, where recent flooding left two people dead and damaged hundreds of homes. The pandemic has created challenges for the arts and artists' livelihoods. We'll look back at the creative solutions that allowed artists to continue to thrive. The same people you love to listen to sing, watch dance, or see perform are some of the hardest hit economically during the pandemic. But as Faith Abercrombie tells us, a new bill at the Arizona legislature hopes to help keep the curtains open on the arts. For some performers, singing alone in their apartment to their couch was their version of working from home. Although many of these artists aren't singing to an in-person audience quite yet, they prepare for performances and competitions as we see the end of quarantine. 
many performing arts spaces are quiet. But as the pandemic plays out, songs are no longer being sung to just furniture. It's not the same. I'm singing to my living room couch. <laughs> House Build 2755 would give $5 million to art institutions across Arizona. The support will help artists like Cheyenne Koss continue their career on a high note. I had almost a year without working um, because uh, contracts were canceled and, and things couldn't happen in the way they were supposed to happen. They need something to, to uplift them. I know so many artists who have uh, changed vocations just because of survival. If it becomes law, the bill would give money to the Arizona Commission on the Arts to distribute statewide. We realize that this is not merely a feel-good bill. This is really a bill about survival for a lot of these organizations. The arts and culture sector uh, will be an important part of restarting the economy, but maybe even more importantly, restarting our human connection to one another. During a time of social distancing, the arts could help sound the right note and help people reconnect again. People are really craving that interpersonal interaction with one another. And I think that music is a perfect way to kind of get that back. The healing process through art might look different than before. You understand? Yes. It's very hard because you can't see how I'm doing it with my mouth. <laughs> but I you, think but you, know. you got it. Yeah. Here we go. But Koss and other artists are ready for when doors open back up. Coming in here and letting it all go and adopting like a persona, a character, something I can use to express things I don't get to express in my everyday life. It's, it's, I love it. There's nothing like it in the world. Like other art organizations around the country and world, the Arizona Opera continues performing virtually or socially distanced. House Bill 2755 passed the House and it now moves to the Senate. In the studio, Faith Abercrombie, Cronkite News. The COVID-19 pandemic has been hard on small businesses, but Cronkite News reporter Tyler Mannion went inside a local staple to find out about a different type of struggle the coronavirus has caused. Film Bar is a unique combination of exactly what you'd expect, a place to view films and a bar. But when I went to get the story of yet another business that struggled through COVID, what I found here was different and deeper than what I've heard before. The reels started rolling at Film Bar in downtown Phoenix 10 years ago. Since, it's been called a cultural epicenter for the city. Owner Kelly Aubie created a place that reminds people of home. It's a little bit like going to see a film in a really uh, interesting living room with, you know, 75 of your best friends. But COVID-related health precautions made that impossible. And Film Bar was like the 62% of businesses that saw a loss of revenue nationwide. Our numbers are down 90% or greater. I'll be considered turning out the lights for good. A decision had to be made. And while the comfortable business plan was this indoor seating arrangement, now all of these seats would be empty. So we had to adapt and did so by changing locations. The solution was to make an outdoor theater with, yes, a huge screen and slightly different chairs. But the emotional toll the pandemic took was strong. I've always kind of thought of myself as somebody who I was pretty good at managing his, his feelings about stuff and kind of a strong guy and can move forward. Uh, but there have been long periods of time where I'm not sure I have left anything left. This constant struggle is the less discussed side of COVID-19's impact on small business. In many ways, it was the straw that almost broke this entrepreneur's back. I just didn't see a way forward. And it didn't at the moment feel as sad as you might think. I was so tired and beat up at that point that it kind of felt like a relief that I could admit to myself that it was time to move on from this. But then came a surge of support on social media with hundreds of people commenting, sharing, and most importantly donating, Aubie had no choice. And going from stale popcorn on the floor of an abandoned theater to this would help start to swing those emotions. So would success at the new location. To see a full house again, people that are ready to see this production, 
uh, and I addressed the crowd when I walked up. I mean, it, it almost brought a tear to my eye because it was like, there they are, you know. Not there they are because, hey, maybe my business is going to make it, but there they are because they're getting out. Now, it's back to the mission of bringing people together through film. Selling a few drinks and showing films again are the important first steps. Because while movies unite a community, Enjoy the show. Thank you. so do small businesses. Filmbar has applied for the SVG grant, which would award them 45% of gross revenue from 2019 and save the business. If they don't get it, though, Aubie will be faced with yet another tough decision. In the studio, Tyler Mannion, Cronkite News. The world of live theater has changed a lot since the beginning of the pandemic, but a group of students and teachers at Shadow Mountain High School decided the show must go on. Tina Giuliano shows us the unique way they're making that happen. A bad place. A place you won't The see. pandemic put everything on pause. And we're cut. Cool. Thank you. Thank the you. live audience that artists and performers need most was gone. But this theater troupe at Shadow Mountain High School took matters into their own hands. I tried to describe it to them, and I don't think they understood it until they saw it. You know, uh, it is a little obtuse, and if you haven't done a lot of film, it doesn't really make sense. I'm actually just as excited about this as I've been feeling about the show. Like, this is really cool, and I'm really excited that get the opportunity to do all the fun stuff with this camera. The students are still performing their spring musical, but instead of people being in these seats, they'll be performing right in front of the camera. You are sitting intensively. Instead you. of a single camera filming okay. the whole performance via a generic live stream, Flowers decided to split the stage into three sections, bring in cameras, and hook each student up to their own microphones, transforming the stage into a TV set. They carted on so-and-so off to urine town the other day. And the cameras move based on which set we're looking at. Because there isn't a live audience, the actors don't have the reassurance of applause, just one of the many things they've had to adjust to this year. They need to be aware of where the camera is and how to interact with that camera effectively as an actor versus a live um, stage audience, which is very different. For the students and teachers, after a year of Zoom meetings and social distancing, the show was more than just the regular spring musical. I'm going to be honest, I'm going to be very sad when the show is done because this is the most social contact and interaction I've had during this trying year. The performers feel at home in the theater, something the pandemic took away from them during the production of their musical last year. They're like my family. I've had such a great experience. I. It's such a great community theater itself. The students are performing their musical online the 16th and the 17th at 7 p.m. For tickets, go to nvaadrama.com. Once you pay, you'll receive a code to access the show online. In Phoenix, Tina Giuliano, Cronkite News. Imagine hiking up Paestua Peak just to find a Japanese folk music performance. Cronkite News reporter Saran and Raboin hiked up the mountain to show us what's been happening at sunrise. At the top of Paestua Peak during sunrise, something amazing happens. Ken Koshio, a Japanese folk artist, has hiked the mountain every day for almost a year to perform a prayer, carrying his taiko drum and instruments on his back. This prayer and ceremony has allowed him to start his day grounded in his culture and spirituality. When the sun was up, I really feel connecting something, you know, feeling in his soul. This ceremony has now captured the attention of other hikers. <laughs> Once people reach the top of the mountain, not only will they find Ken, but they'll find a community. Here we're waiting for that every morning. I'm waiting to, to see my, my friends over here. We like a small community of family, different languages. We all coming here to watch Ken and enjoy his uh, spirit. And while Ken's performance may be based around Japanese culture, everyone watching takes time to reflect upon their own ideals and beliefs. Maybe what I've been doing inspired them to feel that. So maybe that gives them some kind of feeling. So when I'm hiking, I'm not at home and he's doing the prayers. I, in the background, I'm doing prayers myself also. While people of all cultures can relate to the performance, Ken maintains that it's all for his personal devotion. Of course, you know, this is basically for myself. And in some way, if I could inspire them, 
maybe they can inspire another people. Something that started off as an individual tribute has now grown into a collective celebration of a new day. In Phoenix, Serena Raboyne, Cronkite News. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for Break It Down. That's next. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.